Are you thinking about moving to Idaho and you're curious what the schooling options are like and what kind of freedom you might have in that area? Today, I'm here with my beautiful wife and we're gonna talk specifically about homeschooling. Hey guys, if this is your first time to the channel, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. If you wanna learn more about Boise and the housing market and what it's like to eat, sleep, and live here, then be sure to subscribe because that's all I do is make content around that for you guys to help you decide if Boise or Idaho is going to be the right place for you to relocate as you're looking at all the options across the U.S. And today, if you're watching this video, that means you're interested in schooling options and possibly specifically homeschooling options. So I'm going to have an open conversation with my wife because she is way more of an expert on that than me with our four kids. What do you think about when you think about homeschooling overall in Idaho? Yeah, I think overall, I mean, depending on what state you're moving from, some states have a lot of restrictions over homeschooling. Idaho is a very free state to homeschool in, so you don't even have to tell the state you're homeschooling. You don't have to submit anything to the state. Like, they have no oversight over your kids if you don't want them to. There are avenues you can take where you gain a little bit from the state, like funding towards things, and then you do give them a little oversight within that. But as an overarching principle in Idaho, you don't have to tell them anything. You can pull your kids out of brick and mortar school. You could say, I'm homeschooling, and that's it. So as you can see, you can homeschool here and you can do whatever you want. And there's really not a ton of oversight. Right. So you could mess your kids up. <laughs> they could come out completely un 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 uneducated and that's completely fine here in Idaho. Idaho's gonna give you the option. Okay, great. Yeah. But what is there in terms of assistance, not financial assistance, but what programs specifically here in Boise and the Treasure Valley can assist you with homeschooling? Yeah. So there are a lot of co-ops here, ranging from Charlotte Mason, Wild and Free. I mean, pretty much any type of co-op you want, you can probably find it here. There's a lot of like outdoor co-ops. Classical Conversations is really popular here. There's several different groups that you could be a part of. I think some of the things people are finding really helpful are the university model options. So there's a few popping up and I think there's even more set to open up next year, but Independent Learning Academy is one that is like that. So it's university model in the sense that you can sign your kids up for one class, five classes, a la carte, or they have some core class options that you can take so your kids can take all of their core classes Tuesday and Thursday mornings, and then the teachers will send you home with your work at home for those home days. So a lot of that just gives you a lot of variety. Um, a lot of people I know do a lot of their electives and fun classes through ILA, and then they do more of the core stuff at home, but you can really have a lot of freedom within that to give your kids an outside day or two where they can take classes from other people. There are also just some Facebook groups that are really helpful and people have a lot of resources. So you jump into some of those Idaho homeschooling Facebook groups and you just get a lot of ideas of the breadth of options that people have here. And I'll put a lot of links to this stuff down below. So if you're curious to dive into more of things, I'll link some of the co-ops that we can come up with and some of the Facebook groups that you could join to kind of get a head start in and start building relationships. I know people moving here are really nervous about making friends and relationships. And we've found that we typically make a lot of friends in the church we get connected to, and then also homeschooling programs or schooling programs in general we get connected to because we're kind of in the trenches with the parents with them. So with those programs, you're looking at, instead of you being on point five days a week, you're now maybe on point three days a week and the homeschool program is on for two? Is typically yes, yeah, depending on how you do it. Um, there are even some private schools that have a similar option where your kids are going to school a couple of days a week and yeah. then you're doing home learning the other days. I've found, at least from places we have moved from, Idaho has the most breadth of options. Obviously, other states may have more, but I think Idaho in general is a very, very easy state to homeschool in with a lot of support. If you're thinking about moving to Idaho and you've watched enough videos on it and you're just thinking, I'm ready to take the next step, then be sure to reach out. You can call, text, email, schedule a Zoom call, whichever works best for you. I talk with people just like you all the time and help guide them on their journey of calling Idaho home. What does Idaho offer in relationship to helping you fund homeschooling, the curriculum, the all that stuff? So there are several, they're essentially online charter schools, um, for lack of a better word, kind of under the umbrella of Idaho Home Learning Academy. Tech Trap is one. Overture Learning is another. Well, I'm blanking on the third one. I'll add a list down yeah. below, even though we can pull it up on the spot. <laughs> so we have used TechTrep in the past, though now we're with 
Overture. Overture. What was it like using TechTrap when we were homeschooling? Both programs are very similar, but you get funding from the state. Currently, you get $1,700 per child, and then half of that if you have a kindergartner, because overall, Idaho funds kindergarten half day statewide. Taking that money from the state, in return, you are giving them some oversight over your homeschooling. So you are submitting um, evidence of your child's work to hit specific learning goals, depending on the program, every other week or once a month. And by the end of the year, you do have to hit all of those learning goals. And then your child does have to do some state testing as well. You get access to a teacher. You get um, a lot of... <laughs> Speaking of children, you just made the video, buddy. <laughs> so you get access to a teacher through you know, any of those programs who are there to answer any questions you have, help you as you're figuring out how to do those learning goals. Um, they can be as involved or uninvolved really as you need them to be. Um, I have found all the teachers we have had extremely helpful. Um, there's also community around it. So those charter schools will do activities or uh, put on classes for kids or do field trips or things that you can sign up for. So you're joining in with other homeschoolers, but you're getting a bit of a school feel in the sense of some of those outside things that can give you community. And then what are some, some of the fun? Sorry, I was kind of paying attention to your answer, but our kid didn't think this was that interesting. So we quickly left. But what are some things that we have used those funds for? We've used it for purchasing curriculum, um, extracurricular activities like music lessons, passes to the zoo. YMCA. YMCA. You can do ski passes to Bogus Basin. Um, oh, yeah. I should buy a season back right now for the kids because they're on sale from your cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, it's great. It really so there's a lot of flexibility with it. Yeah. And there's really a, nice. there you can find a big Q&A of what is allowed and what is unallowed. Um, but really, the, the breadth of allowed expenses for education are pretty big we're on yeah no yeah. uh any other things this is probably a good overview click links down below are there any other things that you feel like people have questions about like that couple we talked with from vegas she had a lot of questions about this yeah what was that are there things that you shared with her that might be helpful to share yeah potentially i mean i think some people i believe other states that have more oversight over things i've heard of some states that even require vaccinations to be able to homeschool because they give a lot more oversight over those things and idaho is not like that you can do whatever you want to know i know some of you are moving here because you're you're sick of that overreach yeah. and things like that or yeah. so just as an aside idaho does offer all the exemptions for vaccines so you have a religious exemption or a medical exemption or a um oh i'm blanking on the no last pressure. no pressure you have you have whatever the other one is exemptions <laughs> exemptions you have all the exemptions so hopefully you guys found this helpful. I want to thank my wife for coming in and having our kids sit in the hallway while we're doing this. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified of more videos like this that I post each week. Just so you guys know, in the future, I will be putting out more videos on charter options, uh, private schools, and public schools. But hopefully if you're considering this, you found this helpful as you're considering homeschooling. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this. We truly appreciate it.